Hi guys, Dan from On Top Marketing here with another SEO video. Today I'm going to show you how to properly set up your WordPress sitemap for best SEO results. The very first step is to log into the back end of your WordPress website and click on plugins and then click add new. And then in the search here, we just type in Yoast, hit enter. And when it comes up, we want this first one here, Yoast SEO. We want to install that if you haven't already got it on there. As soon as that's installed, we'll be able to go to our sitemap um, that it will automatically create. And you get there by going to your website address forward slash sitemap underscore index dot html. Inside here, we've got um, sort of sitemaps for each of the content site types on the website. So you've got blog posts, pages, uh, the media attachment, categories for the blog, posts for the blog, and then the authors, which is the users for the website. Um, we're going to go through and figure out which ones we want to keep and which ones we don't want to submit um, to Google. And um, I'm going to show you on my site and I'm also going to give you some examples of when you may want to do things a little bit different. So straight away, if we look at post sitemap, well, if we take a look at my site here, I've got articles. So this is the blog posts. So I definitely want to have a sitemap that will include all of these. So I know for sure I can leave this as is. We want to keep posts in here. And we can see what which ones are in here by clicking on this link. We see we've got articles, which is my, my index page that hosts all of them. And then all the individual blog posts in here. We definitely want to keep those. Then we've got page sitemap. And if we click on this, we can see we've got home page, privacy, cookies, the web design, the sitemap, the SEO. We want to keep the pages on the site. So those two things will get them out of the way quite quickly because that's quite an obvious one. Now, I'm going to skip attachment for now and come back to it. But if we look at category sitemap, when we look here, this is where we may, it, on some occasions, and there's a lot of conflict and advice about this, um, but I'm going to show you how to actually make a decision on it. Um, here we've got one, two, three, four, five URLs, and all these are, when you go to them, is these category pages. So they just pull in all of the um the the blog posts that have the category assigned to them which is great for usability um maybe not so great in terms of getting traffic coming in um unless you've done something slightly different so what i would say on these is if these are bringing in traffic for you right now then don't exclude them don't get rid of pages that bring in traffic but if they aren't then there's no benefit to having them there we may as well get rid of them so we can actually you know get rid of these pages that have the duplicate content um as this isn't keyword optimized nobody's going to be searching for this uh and all the content that's on here is on other pages so where well, we've got these excerpts here you know all of this is from the blog posts so there's no unique stuff in here so what we can do is if we go to the search console uh, go to the website and click on new over here. If I actually set this back to six months here, um, set this to new and then go page and then say URLs containing and then paste in that URL that we had. Take off the actual category. So it's just got the website address forward slash category. And then if we hit apply, we can see here that in the last six months there's been zero clicks for this uh, on any of these pages but 70 impressions so if we scroll down we can see these are all the category pages that we just looked at on the sitemap go to queries we see that we're not really got anything coming back so that's a good indicator to me um, that we should probably get rid of these for now as we're not using them in that way there's no point of having these pages on here um, if they're not targeting keywords and bringing in traffic so if we go back now um, to the back end of WordPress and we go to we hover on SEO and go to search appearance we can go to uh, taxonomies and right here we've got categories and it says show categories in search results so that does one of two things if right now it's set to yes that means that the page can be indexed by Google and the page will be included in the sitemap if we set this to no and save it now that page those pages will be removed from the sitemap and they'll also have a no index tag on them so if i open that up in a new tab i'll just show you quickly if we go to this one if we view source we've now got no index in here if we go to the sitemap you'll see that 
category has now gone. Okay, so that's that one. So that's our best bet. Now we've also got tags in here. So let's check if tags is bringing in any traffic on anything by doing the exact same thing. So come to the search console, click on here, URLs containing forward slash tag, click apply. So we've had zero clicks, 18 impressions. We can't see what the queries were, but we can see the tags in here and we, we, we can see that there's no point of having that indexed. So let's do the exact same thing, tags. Let's get rid of that from the search console. Just so you know, guys, because I used to I used to think very differently about this. I, I used to think there's no benefit of excluding pages. But the thing is, it can help because it, it's it's just a bunch of duplicate content that's not bringing in any traffic. Um, and it just makes your site look that little bit um, lower quality in the eyes of Google when you've got a bunch of pages that are, that are indexable um, that don't bring in any traffic. So we'll get rid of those. Now, if we come back to the uh, sitemap we'll see again so we've got uh hang on I need to refresh there we go now tags has gone so now we've just got posts pages attachments and authors so this is where it comes back to um is it, it depends on the on the website because for me my agency website will not have multiple authors this isn't that sort of site but if you have um some sort of blog where you've got multiple people writing um, especially if those people are somewhat influential, you may want to have an author page because you might want to rank for their name. You know, they might be someone who people search for and they might be able to find their articles on your site. So you might want an author page. If that's the scenario you're in, then you do not want to exclude the author archive um, pages from the search results. But because this is just an agency website I'm doing right now, I'm going to get rid of the authors because, as I say, <clears throat> it's not going to bring in any traffic and it's just another poor quality signal. So I've done that Now when I refresh we've just got post page and attachment sitemap So the reason I've left attachments to the end is because this is one that again massively depends on your industry now best practice suggests that you should redirect the attachment URLs to the attachment itself what that means is that if somebody was to visit your attachment page um, they would get redirected directly to the image. So I'll show you that actually working. If we go to uh, the media gallery and we look at one of these images like this one that I uploaded, if we go to view attachment page, you can see that WordPress actually creates a unique or um, URL for that image here. And everybody will tell you most SEO gurus and all the rest of it will tell you to to to, to forward this on um, and if you set this to yes what happens is is when you try to visit this page what will happen is is this page will redirect to the image like that um, however there's no real benefit in doing that unless it comes back to this whole thing about how what I was explaining earlier where you're not getting any traffic from it so you may as well get rid of it um, I have in another industry left this on and because if you're doing image SEO um, you can actually rank those pages because when you're on so if we go to if we go to that post for example uh, sorry if we go to that image there if we was to write a description in here so I'm going to write testing testing one two three if we write that in here um, now if we go to this attachment page, we've got this content in here, right? So if that image, as I say, has got uh, image SEO done and you actually write some content in it, you've created another page. And now this can actually work for long tail keywords. So I've got this, I've got a few different kitchen design clients. Now, one of them, I've done this and with location pages, I've built out, um, you know, loads of images and we're ranking. These attachment pages are ranking and they're bringing leads in. So a lot of SEOs will tell you to get rid of the attachment page, but just think about whether or not it could be bringing in traffic. And, and you can tell um, in the search console by going to um, pages right here, get rid of any filters and just having a look through what, you know, if you're ordered by clicks, have a look through which ones are getting clicks. Also have a look at impressions because sometimes you'll find that there's um, sometimes you'll find that there's there's attachment pages in there that are getting impressions and you can optimize those attachment pages and start getting 
uh, clicks through, which is what as I say I've done for, for for one of my kitchen design clients, and and it's actually brought in quite a few leads, which is which is really why um, you've often got to look at the advice people give and, and take it with a pinch of salt and know that it's on a case by case basis. Um, so I'm on this particular website i'm actually going to redirect the attachment urls to to the attachment itself i'm going to do that because um this industry is a bit different to kitchens but kitchens is all about design people want to see they 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 want to look you know at different types of kitchen blah blah they want to make a decision that way my industry is marketing people aren't really interested in looking at whatever they're interested in themselves what they can get from it so um you know it don't really suit this business, but if you're in, you know, if you sell dresses, if you sell um, any sort of uh, renovations, things like that, you you probably want to keep this on in most instances. But you know, use your head, have a look through Search Console. So um, now I've got my sitemap set up properly, and I just have posts and pages in here. Um, I need to now submit this to the Google Search Console so Google knows where my sitemap is. So I do that by going to the Search Console and just clicking on Sitemaps and then literally just uh, pasting in here where it's got Add New Sitemap, just the end part, sitemap underscore index.xml. Click on Submit and then you'll see it come up in here um, and Google will know exactly what pages that you want to be indexed um, in their search engine. So another thing that I do feel I should point out is there may be a page. So for example, my SEO page here, if I didn't want this to be indexed for whatever reason, I'll give some examples in a minute. All I need to do is come down to advanced here and then I've got allow search engines to show this page in the search results. So I could set this to no. Um, and it says should search engines follow links on this page leave that as yes now if I click update on this what you'll notice is in my sitemap I won't have that SEO page in here anymore um, when we go to my SEO landing page we've now got the no index tag on here so when you're editing whether or not a, the search engine should show the page in the search results on the individual page that will also take it off the sitemap automatically so that's how you can remove them I'm obviously going to set this back to the default um, because I do want it on in my sitemap so I've set that there and we can see that it's appeared back there so that's how you would exclude a specific page now why would you use that the, the time you would use that would be if for example you had a um, a thank you page where people done some sort of action and then it redirects them off to a thank you page and i, I see people using this for tracking uh, in analytics now if your thank you page is indexable i had this with a client before it was horrendous um they actually use that uh, it's a bit of an old-fashioned way of doing things but some people still do it um they had a thank you page that was set as a goal if somebody visited that in analytics um, and so at the analytics data was all screwed up because you could navigate to that thank you page by through Google and you could also get to it through the sitemap. So it wasn't guaranteed that somebody actually completed a goal because they got there, if you see what I'm saying. So that's a good occasion where you want to hide that page from Google and you definitely don't want um, you definitely don't want it to show up in, in the search engines or the sitemap. So. That's a good example of a page that you, you may want to exclude. Now, if you've got other types of content on your site, if you've got custom post types, stuff like that, again, you're going to want to go through and actually make a decision based on what's right for your business. Um, for the most part, things like our work, for example, if you've got an our work or projects, portfolio type thing, you'll probably want that indexed um, on there. So just make sure you don't turn that off. But again, if it's if it's got custom taxonomies, you may want to exclude the taxonomies depending on whether or not you can you know get content in there and optimize around keywords. Um, just whatever your setup is, check it in the search console and make sure before you make any decisions. After you finish going through your sitemap and excluding out anything you don't want and keeping in whatever you do want, you need to submit this to the search console. So to do this, if you just copy this part where it's forward slash sitemap. Sorry, just where it's sitemap underscore index.xml. If you copy that, come into the search console for your website and then go to sitemaps and then literally just paste that in there and click on submit. Then Google will take a look through your sitemap and know exactly where your sitemap is kept on your website. 
Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.